When I was a medical student, an attending physician once told me I've never been sued for ordering a CT scan. And it's true that defensive medicine is incredibly common and there are many reasons for it, but it comes at a cost. Like in this 36 year old who I was once helping go to sleep for a colon cancer resection surgery and it blew my mind that such a young patient could have such an advanced stage cancer. Spend five seconds looking on the internet and you'll see the alarming trends of colon cancer in particular that have skyrocketed in younger adults in the United States. While many factors contribute to cancer development, one in 20 of these cancers may be caused by us doctors. And some of those cases could be 100% prevented. In this video, you'll learn why CT scans have become so much more dangerous over the years and why insurance companies and defensive medicine are adding to the problem. And I'm going to share three specific questions you should ask your doctor if you're ever ordered an elective CT scan so that you can better protect against this critical cancer risk. And I care a lot about these cancers because CT scan use has increased 30% in the last few years. And a lot of those tests might be of low value or unnecessary. On top of that, insurance companies may sometimes throw roadblocks to more expensive but safer alternatives to CT scans. So here's what you need to know to better navigate the system to protect your health and the health of your loved ones. 1971 was a revolutionary year in medicine. It was the year of the first CT scan. It looked really primitive to today's scanners, but it revolutionized emergency medical care because in seconds, you could look inside the body and determine if a patient needed to have surgery or could be discharged home with antibiotics or maybe with nothing at all. In fact, the CT scanner is so powerful that we call it the donut of truth in the emergency room. And when minutes matter in the emergency room and we can't diagnose things externally, you better bet that that CT scanner can be life-saving. But it's a slippery slope because while those CT scans can help keep patients safe and keep malpractice lawyers at bay, it comes at a cost. Because CT scans, while expensive, are cheaper than alternatives like magnetic resonance imaging or MRI scans. And some insurance companies might require a lot more paperwork or prior authorization for an MRI if a CT scan can provide the same level of information. I'll share the differences between CT scanners, MRIs, and ultrasound in just a minute so you can better advocate for yourself with your doctor. But back to the CT scan, because while they're very fast, relatively cheap, and very effective in diagnosing conditions, comes at the cost of ionizing radiation. Radiation is all around us. It helps us see things and helps keep us warm. These are all examples of non-ionizing radiation. To penetrate inside your body and construct images of your internal organs, CT scanners need to use ionizing radiation. That's radiation with enough energy to knock electrons off of atoms and molecules, forming charges called ions, hence the name ionizing radiation. The problem is that these ionized molecules can then cause damage and mutations in the DNA of your cells. And damaging DNA can mess up how cells replicate that DNA, and if they're mutated in just the right way, those cells can divide and divide and eventually turn into cancer. Now your body has lots of tools to identify and eliminate these mutated and damaged cells, but it's possible for some of them to slip under the radar of your immune system. And those are the cells that could potentially later on turn into cancer. This is how radiation from the sun, from nuclear bombs and x-rays and CT scans can all ultimately lead to cancer. The difference between CT scans, which reconstruct three-dimensional images, and X-rays, which are fundamentally two-dimensional images, is the difference in ionizing radiation dose, which can easily be more than 100x. Now, fortunately, we haven't had increased ionizing radiation from nuclear bombs in a long time, but ionizing radiation from CT scans has increased a lot in the last few years. Despite the low value of information that it might provide doctors and other clinicians. And you better believe that sometimes these tests are ordered just so that we can be ultra safe and defensive in ruling out very rare and unlikely scenarios in patients. It's not an easy question to confront, but it's a reality that doctors and patients have to face. On top of that, radiation doses may have also increased substantially in the last few years. A 2025 study by the Journal of the American Medical Association suggested that 103,000 future cancers might be attributable to CT scans performed in 2023. That number can represent up to 5% of all new cancers diagnosed annually. 
You need to know that ionizing radiation from CT scans can cause all sorts of cancers, but the three most common are lung, colon, and blood cancers. And this sounds really scary, like hospitals are just bombarding patients with radiation to cause these tumors. Fortunately, the individual risk is quite low from an individual scan in one person, but the population average very quickly adds up. So here are some key points you need to know about CT scan related cancers. First, the age of radiation exposure is very important, and children less than one year old are going to be much more susceptible to the carcinogenic or cancer-causing risks of ionizing radiation. That risk appears to decrease with age, fortunately. Second, the body parts being scanned also play a role, with abdomen and pelvic scans being higher risk than head scans. Lastly, there are many potential causes of cancer in organs with a lot of exposure to external toxins like the gut lining. Remember that everything that you put in your mouth eventually can potentially touch the innards of your gut and potentially lead to cancer. I'm going to share some specific risks with colon cancer that I discuss with my patients in my longevity clinic in San Francisco because the rates of colon cancer in young folks are increasing so rapidly. So if you just want to hear about the CT specific risks, you should skip ahead. The rising rate of colon cancer risks in young folk is probably partly attributable to CT scans, but there's likely many, many other variables as well. For example, increased consumption of red and processed meats and other processed foods, microplastics that can disrupt your gut lining, and even your kitchenware, especially when exposed to high temperatures in cooking. Because microplastics in particular can be so readily absorbed through your skin or through your gut, I really spend dedicated time working with my patients to identify these exposures, whether from receipt paper or through water bottles or stuff that you're cooking with in the kitchen. But colon cancer risk doesn't just come from what goes in your mouth. There's also decades old research that's identified the association between smoking, alcohol, and obesity with colon cancer. And we know that obesity rates in the youth continue to rise, something else the pandemic didn't help with either. Next, I'm going to share what you need to tell your doctor if you're ever ordered an elective CT scan. So if you're learning something new, please remember to share with your loved ones and hit that like button. Remember that you can always learn more about patient advocacy and longevity medicine by visiting my San Francisco Clinic's website at www.claris-health.com. There are two other ways to look inside your body without having to cut you open, the MRI and the ultrasound. You can, and sometimes should, ask your doctor if these can be ordered instead of a CT scan depending on the setting. Ultrasound uses sound waves to penetrate inside your body and reconstruct images. I use this in my clinic all the time because we believe it's safe and does not involve ionizing radiation. However, its depth of scanning is very limited compared to CT scans. So in patients who need deep structures imaged or patients with lots of fatty tissue, an ultrasound might not work. MRI is a fantastic tool for imaging deep structures without needing ionizing radiation. Sometimes it can even produce better quality images than CT, especially for things like soft tissue or brain tissue or spinal cord abnormalities. Unfortunately, MRI technology is very slow and very expensive compared to CT scan. You shouldn't be surprised to hear that some insurance carriers may require more paperwork or prior authorizations to authorize payment for an MRI scan instead of a cheaper scan. There are also far fewer MRIs than there are CT scanners in the world. And some patients simply may not have access to an MRI in a timely fashion. In some emergency settings, the time to obtain an MRI might mean the difference between life and death. So there definitely are some times when CT scans are very appropriate. As a patient, you need to feel comfortable asking these three questions of your doctor anytime an elective CT scan is ordered. Number one, is this CT scan necessary? Why can't I get an MRI or an ultrasound? Number two, is the radiation from the CT scan going to be dangerous for me because of my other risk factors? This is where you can remind your doctor of the other risk factors you have for cancer, the ones that I mentioned earlier. Things like a personal history of cancer, a family history of cancer, a smoking history, history of alcohol use or obesity. This can be an important piece of information for your doctor to justify an alternative to a CT scanner in the event that there's pushback from an insurance company. And number three, what's the worst thing that'll happen if I don't get this CT scan? 
You need to know the risks, benefits, and alternatives of getting a procedure or not getting a procedure, and that includes the ionizing radiation from a CT scan. The goal of these three questions is to work with your doctor to help them understand your specific health and risk factors so they can make the safest decision for you. Whether it's reducing the defensive medicine strategy because you're actively collaborating with your doctor, or if it's to justify a prior authorization, these questions can help you get the safest imaging test for you. At the end of the day, doctors are not trying to intentionally hurt you, but you're going to be the best advocate for your health. If you feel that you're being ordered a test that might not be the safest or the right test for you, like an elective CT scan, when there might be safer alternatives. You may need to ask your doctor to help advocate for you with your insurance carrier. And it will all start with you speaking up for yourself. Don't worry about being the squeaky wheel when it comes to your health or the health of your loved ones. To learn more about my approach to longevity medicine and reducing our cancer risks, please visit my San Francisco Clinic's website, www.claris-health.com. And subscribe to keep up with all my videos. Remember that you have more power over your health than you've probably ever been told.